world champion in action tonight against Martin Amarias in a 10-rounder. This will be our main event. And Joe, this will be uh, an interesting fight. And once again, uh, Darren Van Horn trying to fight his way back up that ladder once again. Yeah, it will be interesting because Martin Amarias is a very, very qualified opponent for uh, Darren Van Horn. And I think Darren Van Horn, unfortunately, really, we, we really didn't get to see him fight Iran Barkley. And that last fight against Barkley, he came in with a hand injury and the flu. And I know that I was there with him the night before and I had saw, seen how sick he was. Never got a chance to really get on track against him. And I think tonight you're going to see, uh, of course, it won't be Iran Barkley in front of him. Right. But it will be a, a, a better Darren Van Horn, one that really could have done this against Barkley and maybe fared a little bit better. Well, in reference to the Barkley fight, uh, even uh, Darren Van Horn going into that fight appeared to uh, uh, know that there was something wrong. We talked to him about the Barkley fight. It certainly is not uh, an interesting, uh, it is an interesting situation for him, but not not one that he shies away from, but he figured he had some problems going in to that bout. I had a uh, almost like a hairline fracture in my right hand. I thought, and I went to the hospital that night, like around 11 o'clock, and uh, the the I was there from 11 o'clock at night until like seven seven o'clock that next morning. I was up all night, and the doctor recommended me not to fight, and so um, I didn't fight. At least I didn't think I was going to fight. You know, we called the fight off. And I finally went to sleep after, like, a rules meeting or something. I finally went to bed at 9 o'clock. I was up all night, all, all day. And then I finally went to bed about 9 o'clock. And then uh, my, my dad woke me up about 3 o'clock and said, Darren, you can't pull out. And I said, why? And he said, well, there's just there's too many things involved here. And because there wasn't um, a break, a clear break where you can see and justify, um, I could have been lying, at least from, from, from their standpoint. So I, I just went on ahead with the fight. I knew I got hit with a left hook, and that was it. Um, like, the first time I went down, the referee asked me if I was fine, and I could have gave him the square root of any number he threw at me. And then when I got back up, um, um, I went down again, more of off balance, and he said, are you fine? I said, man, I'm just fine. I just, I, I don't have any legs left. And that was why it was called, because I guess, you know, I just said I didn't have any legs, and he stopped it. After you're being treated a certain way for so long for being a champion and then not being a champion, you get treated so much different because um, people tag you as a champion and treat you in a completely different way, um, which is the way that I'd like to be treated. But unless you have that championship, you don't get treated that way. And that just gives me more, like after I lost the first time, that gives me more desire to be back up where I was because it's like night and day. Well, after I graduated from college, and with the economy the way it is where it's hard to find a job, it, I've come to a realization that, it, you know, I don't want to have a job. I don't want to go out and get a job. And I see if I did want to get a job, it's not going to be that easy to go and get one. So I can see that I'm going to make my mark in this game, and that I can very well do that. But I have to, I, I have to, to, to set a goal and go after it, which I, which, up until this time, I never have done. I always thought, well, you know, if I don't ever do anything in boxing, right when I get out of college, I'll, I'll go join a network and or do, do something on cable and be, be a big-time broadcaster. And um, it doesn't work like that. And there is Darren Van Horn as he gets ready now. He's into the ring and uh, ready for this action tonight. His opponent this evening will be Martin Amarias, who is across the ring right now. And Martin certainly does not have the experience of a Darren Van Horn. 17 fights to his credit so far. So he goes in, he feels that he has a very good opportunity to do something, a real chance of a lifetime. So the question is, what does he expect tonight in this bout and from Van Horn? Yeah, he likes to box most of the time. He likes to punch, give you three, four punches, and he likes to use a lot of side movement. That's what he does, uh, and he has a, yeah, he got a good combinations. But I don't think he hits hard enough. I never been knocked out, so this is not an exception. And uh, I'm seeing he's been knocked out, so so I'm gonna go for it. So he's ready to go for it. You heard from him, Martin Amarias, ready for a real chance tonight to make his mark in the boxing world and put his name in the boxing map. Can he do it? We are gonna find out. And now for the ring introductions of both fighters, we go up for our main event to Danny Valdivia. Al Goosen Promotions, in conjunction with Ten Goose Boxing Club, presents the Friday Night Fight's main event of the evening. Light heavyweights, 10 rounds. Judging at ringside, Dick Young, Vince Delgado, Luke Filippo. Our third man in the ring, Mr. Lou Moret. 
In the red corner to my right, wearing dark blue trunks from Nogales, Sonora, Mexico, fighting out of Pico Rivera, California. He represented Mexico in the 1988 Olympic Games with a professional record of 10 wins, 7 losses, 7 wins by knockout at 175 pounds, Martin Amarillas. <laughs> In the blue corner, wearing white trunks with blue trim from Lexington, Kentucky, with a professional record of 48 wins, three losses, 27 big wins by knockout, at 173 pounds, a recent graduate of the University of Kentucky, the former IBF junior and super middleweight champion, Darren, the schoolboy, Van Horn. <laughs> Doing your instruction in the dressing room. Do you have any questions? Shake hands and wait the bell. Good luck. And here we got the tail of the tape. 6-2 for Amarias. That's the number that sticks out in your mind more than anything else right here. But the age difference, uh, three years, uh, Amarias, a uh, little bit older. Uh, a little bit longer reach, of course, comes along with that 6-2 frame. But um, the speed factor, I think, is going to be the biggest asset in uh, Van Horn's favor and the size for Amarias. And so here we go into round one. There's Darren Van Horn in the white trunks. Joe, at 23 years old, he's had 51 fights. That's amazing. Well, that's what happens when you turn pro at 16. And uh, Darren did turn pro at a very young age in Kentucky. Uh, had a lot of fights in between. Was groomed the right way by G.L. Van Horn, his father. He was a very good trainer, very smart boxing man. He's been around a long time. And uh, just 23 years old with that many fights. Martin Amaria starts off by forcing the action coming forward. And Darren Van Horn is a fine boxer. Well, this is something that Darren Van Horn couldn't do against Iran Barkley, number one. He didn't look like his full concentration was there with all the problems he was having right when he stepped in the ring, I know with that. And the other thing was uh, Barkley was so vicious that night, on top of him so quickly, he never had a chance to get on track. And this is really what he should have been doing against Barkley had he had the opportunity and the chance to do it. Amarius, as you can see, looks as though he has some real style to him. He certainly does, and I'll tell you, he looks a lot trimmer. His body has been transformed a little bit more. He looks a little bit more sleek around the rib cage, and his, his shoulders look good and strong. So uh, he probably took this fight very seriously and trained uh, very, very hard for it. Landed a good little body punch in close as he charged at Van Horn. He's had several weeks to prepare for this fight, so it's not surprising that he got into good shape. Grows very quiet in here all of a sudden in round one. Uh, Joe, it's like the fans expecting something and getting ready to explode at the first sign. But hardly a murmur from them right now. Well, right now, it's the first round. It's a feeling out process. And believe me, these two guys will start throwing some bombs uh, after we get into the second, third round here. But right now, it's a... Uh, it's just a feeling out process, and both of them want to see what each, what each other has as far as speed and, and power. Amarius fought just three weeks ago at the forum. He KO'd uh, Billy Mitris in six rounds. Joe, you saw that fight? I saw that fight. What was your impression of him? Now? Well, <clears throat> he looks a lot sharper. That's what I said. It was just a, a six weeks ago, and his body looks like he's a lot more tight and a lot better shape. And uh, he had a difficult time with uh, Billy Mitris, but uh, Mitris very awkward. Nice double left hook by uh, Darren Van Horn. Went from that left hook from the head right down to the body, which is so hard to do, but it's a good, it's a good trick. And he pulled it off really nice. And Amarius countered with his own left hook. So the first round close. Van Horn moving in now and beginning to back Amarius up a little. Haven't seen much of that so far here in round number one. Van Horn, a two-time world champion. Amarius trying to fire out with combinations to end round one. Double left hook, head of the body, and there was the counter hook by Amarius. Of course, Van Horn was rolling away from it, so a lot less impact than it might have looked at the, at the time. But uh, here we go into round number two. Amarius, a pretty good boxer, as you can see so far. He's got a fine left hand, and he's putting it to good use so far. He landed that good left hook that Joe was talking about. And Van Horn, probably not familiar with the opponent, just trying to adjust now to what he's got in front of him. 
And I'm sure Darren Van Horn's a little surprised at how big this guy is, Amarius. He is a big, uh, light heavyweight at 6'2". Um, but he just, uh, when he came in at Van Horn, who just caught Amarius with a little left hook off the glove, but uh, he put a little pressure on uh, Van Horn earlier in the round with a good right hand left hook. And I'm sure Van Horn felt those punches because he's a strong looking guy, Amarius. Amarius did fight Anthony Hembrick, who would be a future opponent here at Van Horn, as we were talking about. And Hembrick stopped him with cuts. They fought in Jakarta, Indo Indonesia. I asked him if he was nervous about this fight. He said, no, not at all. Not really. He was nervous before the Olympic Games, but that's been about it. And he really does not fear the punch of Darren Van Horn. Well, and you can almost sense that at the way he's walking right in Van Horn and landed a good little short right hand on Darren just then. Uh, Van Horn has really got to get a, a stiffer and steadier jab going to keep Amarius off of him and work a little body shots. Slow him down a little because Amarius is anxious to get in like that on Van Horn. So we've seen some surprising things going on so far tonight here at the Country Club in Reseda. And so far, an excellent account of himself being given by Martin Amarius. Against Darren Van Horn with a record of 48 and 3. And believe me, he has only been defeated by outstanding boxers. Just two men, Gianfranco Rossi and Iran Barkley. And you know you've got to respect the power of Darren Van Horn. When he fought Lindell Holmes, so what I really felt was one of the uh, tougher guys in that 168-pound division. He stopped Lindell Holmes with a body shot. Yeah, he really dropped him. Too. He really dropped him. It was one of the most vicious body shots I had ever seen and just stretched him out like he had been hit on the chin. Here you got Van Horn, who's uh, who's really continuing to pressure Amarius right now, and that may be a better uh, tactic for him, backing up Amarius, is you give this guy uh, uh, too much room to come in and uh, like that, to come in and put pressure on you, and you might be asking for a little bit of trouble because that's the way Amarius likes to work. He likes to come right at you. Van Horn, uh, Darren Van Horn, and Martin Amarius. What would you expect now out of uh, Darren Van Horn? Do you expect him to try to pick up the pace? Too, well, or what? you know, as we saw at the last part of that second round there, he was doing, oh, and Amarius backing up Van Horn. Exactly what I was, the point I was making early in the round. It looked like Van Horn is going to fare a little bit better if he pressures Amarius because Amarius doesn't look comfortable going back and punching as much as he does coming forward. And you saw when Van, Van Horn backed up there, he got hit with a good three-punch combination. Come on, Darren, you got to walk him down. Van Horn, as I mentioned, uh, out of the University of Kentucky, already talking about going to law school and that type thing. Trying to give fighters a bad name or something. <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to do. <laughs> and he's a broadcasting major. He's done some TV work, in fact, in Kentucky. Oh, well, I'm going to put an end to that real quick. <laughs> you got a chance in heck of coming after my job. Nice little right hand just missed by Van Horn. If those start landing, uh, Amarius could be in trouble. But I'll tell you, Amarius, you got to give him a lot of credit. He's, you know, he was an Olympic member for the 1988 Mexican Olympic team, so you know he's uh, a qualified fighter. And uh, even though his record isn't the greatest, he really is a classic fighter and does a lot of good things here, and he looks prepared. So let's see how far he can take this against Van Horn. Well, he landed a pretty good combination there, but for the 30 seconds before that, Van Horn uh, was getting busier and busier by the second, it seemed. But he's got to be busy and sustain that attack and really be a little bit more accurate. He's been falling a little bit short with his right hand, and I'm sure he'd like to be able to find the range, and he's going to do it off that jab right there. But there goes Amarius. Uh -huh. Good left hook, right hand, right on the chin of uh, Darren Van Horn. Didn't, uh, didn't really hurt him, but it, it forced him backwards a couple of feet. Well, it got his attention, but you take six, seven, eight, nine of those over the course of a fight, and uh, you won't have to worry about getting your attention, just getting up off the mat. Those catch up to you. Amarius 
is really surprising. I'm sure Darren Van Horn has got to be asking himself, you know, uh, this guy doesn't seem much like a 50-50 fighter like his, uh, his record uh, shows. That's right, a 10-7 and seven record, but this is one of those chance of a lifetime things, Joe, and, he, and Emory certainly is ready. That's right, you can never underestimate a guy, and Darren Van Horn's the first one to, to tell you that, and he just got I caught with a little left hook himself. Both of them traded hooks, and I think Van Horn may have gotten the worst of that left hook. Right up the cut to the body at the same time. Had his left hand down. Amaris clipped him with a short right hand over the top. And there's Darren Van Horn going back to his corner. And his dad, G.L. Van Horn, with him in the corner. What do you think, Joe, in your, in your mind about family members being in the corner? Of course, you guys have got a situation which we saw earlier with, uh, with your nephew and... Uh, Father and son type thing. Sometimes that doesn't always work out. No, but uh, sometimes it doesn't work out when you. Well, we got this open here. When you come with the right, come over here. When you come with the left, you take your head with you. You get up, you stand up and breathe. Middle, front, and bounce. I got it. There, stay down low. Let's just start cranking them up. Let's put the motherfucker in the fist fight. We get a little replay here. Van Horn, both of them trading the hooks, and there's the one that Van Horn ran into, and Amareus caught uh, high on the head. And uh, G.L. Van Horn was, uh, we talked, speaking of father and son combo here, was telling Darren that he's got to really, what he's got to do is shift his head to the side of the punch where the punch is going. Left hook, shift your head down to the right. Right hand, shift your head down to the left. This way, taking your head out of the middle so you don't get countered. We're into round four, and John Lynch has found, if you would, on that uh, subject that we brought up before we uh, listened to G.L. there in the corner, the father and son thing in the corner. Is it a good thing? Because sometimes it seems to work out bad for fighters. Well, yeah. You can name the fighters. I mean, they popped to my mind right now. Jerry Quarry had a rough go with his father. Uh, of course, Sean and Pat O'Grady had a great relationship in the corner. Good left hand by uh, Darren Van Horn. Um, you can go on and on. There are quite a bit of it, but it depends on the father and the son. Uh, GL and Darren Van Horn get along beautifully. Roy Jones uh, Jr., of course, and his father had the falling out. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not opposed to it, and I'm not in favor of it. I just say, let them be, and if it works, great. I'm happy for them. But to, to finalize it, there's a lot of trainers that aren't related to their fighters that have falling out. So, you know, how do you explain it? I think we should point out one thing, too, is that Condelario Amarillas is in his, <laughs> the father of Chet. That's right. <laughs> is in uh, Martin's corner. Uh, as, as long as good, you know, cool heads prevail in the corner, I think it's just fine. And good right good. hand. Yes, it was. Right hand, and that one backed up on Maria's. He definitely felt that punch. And Van Horn now trying to follow up on it and going to the body a little bit to follow up on it. Ooh, and Darren just slipped a good counter right hand, but didn't slip that one. Rolled with it from Amarius. But uh, Amarius is playing a little possum here, went into a little shell, and it came out. Look at this combination. He's coming out with him. Good short jabs. Yeah. Landed a short little left hook to the head, and then went down to the body. So Amarius was shaken up momentarily, but uh, came right back, showing good recuperative powers. And I think probably the most damage came to, to Amarius from that right hand of the body that he took from Darren Van Horn. And Van Horn should be throwing that more often, just like he did there. Because uh, Amarius has got a lot of spunk right now. He's got a lot of, ooh, and a good counter right hand over the jab of Darren Van Horn. He's got to keep that chin tucked in his shoulder and left hand up to avoid that. Ooh. Nice right hand by Darren Van Horn. Countered off a left hook to the body from Amarius. Not many of Darren's punches have landed flush so far. No, but he's starting to find the mark a little bit better as well as Amarius. Uh, as the more that Van Horn opens up, the better it is for Amarius because he's going to leave openings. But and that Van means that this fight is picking up in action, exactly. too. <laughs> just like we had said. And uh, right now, Van Horn is starting to press the issue. He just had to figure out uh, Amarius a little bit, and he's starting to get to him somewhat. He's finding the range, and no question about it, Joe. You're absolutely right. You see it there again. He landed the left hook and coming back to the body again. Mixing up his attack now is Darren Van Horn. What I love about v Darren Van Horn, once he gets going, even though he dropped his left hand there and took a short right hand from Amarius, what I love about Van Horn is his tenacity. It was exactly in that fight against uh, Lindell Holmes. He just pursued Holmes, even though Holmes was giving him a lot of trouble, and finally stopped him with that body shot. He's got guts, you know, for five fighters. And a nice right hand by Van Horn just before the bell sounded. We go back into the corner with Martin Amarius and his dad, Candelario. Treatment. It is warm as we 
mentioned here in the, the country club in Reseda. But they have to be happy with what they'd had up till maybe the last minute and a half of that round when Darren Van Horn and Joe finally seemed to find the range. Yeah, and I think Darren Van Horn is pulling these rounds out by being a little bit more active, but it looks like Amarius is in each of these rounds and considerably dangerous still. And here's that little replay of uh, Van Horn throwing that flurry with that right hand sneaking through, left hook, and there was the final right hand that finally got through. His tenacity paid off with those six, seven punches. There's a little left hook the body from Amarius, and there's that counter right hand over the top because of it. That's why going to the body early is real dangerous because that man's usually sharp enough to counter you if you're pulling back after that body shot. This is round five. You're watching Prime Championship Boxing. And the former champion in action tonight is Darren Van Horn in the white trunks. Two-time world champion at both 154 and 168-pound weight categories in the IBF. Came out with a very strong round four. Martin Amarias in the black trunks. good left hook right over the top. One of the rules of thumb there is that you teach in the boxing gym, when you throw that right hand to the body, step out to your right or step back with a jab, but don't just pull up after a body shot. Darren really controlling the action now, Joe, and Amarius has not thrown many shots in this round. He's just been basically backing away trying to box. And Van Horn controlling the action. Questionable body shot there was a little bit low. Van Horn just shakes it off, and Lou Moret, the referee, doesn't really acknowledge it. But if you saw it happen again, I'm sure he'd tell him to keep the punches up. A little good right hand just grazing, left hook from Amaria. His punches aren't landing solidly, but uh, they are coming close to finding their mark. I still think Van Horn, when he pressures Amarius, is when he really does his best. See, like that. Neither man has been down, neither man marked so far. Van Horn's punches are heavier. Amarius, uh, in the first three rounds, enjoyed some success. Again, he was in every round. That's not to say he was beating That's up right. Darren Van Horn by any means. Not at all. He was in there. Well, he's a skilled fighter with two arms, two legs like Van Horn, and, you know, he, he's going to get his shots. And it's, this is not just some guy they put in here with Van Horn to make Van Horn look good. They wanted to give Van Horn some work and to give him some tough competition, and this guy's got an opportunity to win this fight if he tries uh, hard just like this and keeps punching like that. Now he's getting busier here at the end as we near the end of the round. Right hand lead to the body tried by Van Horn without success. Kentucky. Come on, come on. Yelling Kentucky from his corner, which I have to think is probably a signal for some type of punch. Maybe there's a good right hand to the body. I don't know if it meant they were coming towards the end of the round to, to pick it up, but that may have been so. round five. Van Horn lead right hand landed flush, and uh, that was uh, one of his better punches in that round. Here's Van stepping up the action. Really, he's stepping into Amarius a lot, which I think is going to serve him better, and that's probably what G.L. Van Horn saw in the corner, is telling his son to pressure Amarius more, because he's doing better when he's going forward. All right, as Van Horn and Amarius mix it up here in round six, let's check Joe's scorecard and see how the fight's going according to Joe Goose. Well, I've got um, Van Horn ahead, but not real comfortably. Uh, Amarius is in each and every one of these rounds, but I just think that the experience of Van Horn, and uh, he's a little bit busier in landing the cleaner shots, has been winning them these rounds. Darren showing a little upper body movement there before he threw that punch. Well, he's quite good at that. Uh, he's, he's a real slippery fighter. you got to give him a lot of credit. He's very cagey. He's had a lot of experience, and he's taught him a lot of the, uh, the little savvy, tricky moves in the ring. Yes, he stepped back there, Joe, and landed a nice right uppercut to the body. Amory has answered back with a little jab of his own. And Horn winning the 154-pound title, beating Robert Hines for that. 168-pound title in the fight that Joe referred to earlier with the knockout of Lindell Holmes with a body punch, and now the two mix it up. 
Right hand from long range by Amarius. And now Van Horn coming on. Amarius' corner uh, really urging uh, Martin Amarius to step up the pace and come forward because they figure he's doing better when he's coming forward. And waving the white towel, trying to get him to put pressure on Van Horn. Good luck took by Van Horn, a good body shot. Van Horn does some nice work to the body, especially with that right hand. But uh, I'm sure something that he and his father are going to look at when they watch these tapes is that Darren's popping that head up after he finishes a body shot, which can be very dangerous. And it's, oh, good right hand to the body by Van Horn. And that's exactly what Barkley caught him with. They had a few exchanges in the middle. Van Horn popped the head up and got clipped with a great left hook early on. Down momentarily. They just quickly wipe our gloves off. Of course, no knockdowns. Well, as you look at the monitor here, you can see the blood coming down the left side of Amarius. There might have been a clash.